What's happening Karate Playbook team? Welcome to another video. Now if this is your first time on here, my name is Nick and actually on the last video we talked about three components of Kumite or sparring which are speed, timing, and distance and how they all relate to each other. Now in today's video we're going to break down speed and we're gonna break it down in a way that's really easy to remember because when I think about speed, I think about the flash and I think about the color red. So we're gonna use that acronym, we're gonna break it down, that way we'll remember it really easily and I'll give you some drills and tips that you can use while you're getting your training going. Let's get started. All right, so just like I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna use the letters R-E-D and we're gonna use those to help us remember how we're gonna generate maximum speed. Now, as we jump into these drills, if there are things that you like, make sure you hit that like button and then comment below with which ones are your favorite and any drills that you have that we haven't mentioned in here. But also make sure you hit subscribe so you stay updated with all of our upcoming videos because we're gonna do some on timing and distance and then anything else that you guys request. We're always up for helping you wherever you need it. All right, let's jump into the drills. All right, so jumping right into it, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is being relaxed. Relax. Now, many of you probably already know that we need to be relaxed during sparring, but I just wanna throw a couple ideas at you that really will emphasize why we need to be so relaxed before we try to throw any technique. All right, so if we think about it, if I had a weight here, this thing weighs five pounds, and if I was gonna curl this here, obviously it's not a lot of weight, I wouldn't tense all of my muscles and curl in like this because that's gonna make that five pound weight feel like it's 50 pounds. Now that might be a great way to get a good workout if you don't have heavy weights, but that's not a great way to utilize speed. So when we're in our fighting stance here, I wanna be as relaxed as possible because even if I tense my bicep a little bit, that's the muscle that's used to pull my arm back. All I wanna do when I jab is throw my hand out. So it makes no sense for me to tense the muscles that make my arm go the opposite direction. So what I wanna do is if my arm weighs five pounds, I'm gonna hold just enough so that my arms stay up, but not so hard that my arms are locked. This goes the same with our footwork and all of our body shifting. If I'm sitting here, hitting the ground with my feet like this, this is gonna drain you of energy and it's really going to slow you down. So we wanna be as relaxed as possible and just use enough muscle to keep you up. All right, now the second thing that we're talking about is explosion, muscle explosion. <clears throat> and really what we're talking about is my ability to go from zero miles per hour to maximum speed in very little time. So if you're looking at cars, you don't look at it and say, this car can go 200 miles an hour. You look at it and you say, this car can go from zero to 60 in this amount of time. So that's really more important than raw speed is your ability to get up to speed as fast as possible. Now, while with the first one, being relaxed is something we can immediately change in our body, muscle explosion is going to take you some time and some work. I personally do some explosive push-ups, which I'll toss a card up here and I'll put a link down in the description box of a video I did a while back on that. And then also a lot of stuff for resistance bands. I love those because they help increase your explosion by adding more and more resistance as you go out. All right, so the third and final thing that we're gonna talk about today is our ability to be direct. So with this, I can be as relaxed as possible, I can be explosive, but if I'm throwing, let's say, a reverse punch or a right cross, whatever technique you're throwing, and instead of going in, I go around like this, obviously my technique is not gonna get there in time. Again, if we think about this in a different way, if we were racing, and you have one person that is running in a straight line, and the other person is running side to side, obviously the person running in a straight line is gonna win pretty much every time, even if the person running side to side is much faster. So with this, we wanna keep this in mind that our techniques need to be as direct as possible. So if I block down and I wanna throw a back fist, I don't have time to reset 
and then throw here. If I block down, this is now my guard, and I have to throw right from there in order to maximize my speed. All right, so let's talk for just a second about a couple drills that we can do to really gain our edge when it comes to our speed. Now, when we're talking about relaxation, we don't really have too many intense drills to do for this, but what we wanna do is relax and just shake out our muscles as much as possible so I don't have any extra tension in them. So I'm just gonna flag my arms out and then softly bring my hands up and then relax them again. And then from here, bring them up, get comfortable and then relax them and do this a number of times until you can get comfortable with not holding any extra tension in those muscles while we do this. All right, so next one, when we go on to explosion, this is the one where we get to have some fun and move fast. Now, what I have here is just a wiffle ball, not really anything fancy. You can use a tennis ball, you can use a ball of socks, you can use a karate glove, a boxing glove, really whatever you can use that's fairly small and lightweight. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna reach out as far as possible, and my goal is to bring my hand back and out and catch it. So I'm gonna drop it from here. I'm not gonna toss it up. I'm gonna drop this and as it falls, I'm going to bring my hand back, touch, and then try to catch it. So I can hold this up a little bit to get comfortable with it, but I'm gonna be relaxed and just go right from here. <laughs> Sometimes you'll knock it across the room just like that but it doesn't really matter. As long as we're getting this idea to throw it out, bring it back, you're gonna increase your explosion because you need to get up to speed as fast as possible. All right, so let's go on to the last one, which was being direct. All that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up into our stance and put ourselves right next to a wall. This one really will help you increase your efficiency and your direct action. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna set up next to that and I'm just gonna throw my punches just like this. Now obviously if my elbow comes out, I'm gonna hit whatever's next to me, whether I'm standing next to a wall or I put a bag here where I have a training partner, whatever I have, it doesn't really matter as long as it's keeping my arm from kicking out or if it does kick out, it lets me know immediately because I will run into it. All right, so just make sure if you're working on speed, be as relaxed as possible, explode as fast as possible, and go in a straight line and be direct. I hope these tips help. If you like them, please hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed and then share this with any friends that it could be beneficial for them. Thank you all so much. Have an awesome time training. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.